Psalm 34, uh, hopefully will tie in with your message today, Michael. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him, saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you saints, <clears throat> for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And then finally in verse 22, the Lord redeems his servants. No one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. May God add his blessing that reading of his word. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and faithfulness to our church over the years. It's such an honor to be able to freely gather and worship you. May we never take this gift for granted, but always treasure it as a special and beautiful thing that is not possible for all your people. Thank you that you are a God, our God, and that you love us and you want us to share our lives with you and to bring our needs to you. Hear our prayer. And this morning, our prayer is uh, for Ukraine. Lord, we pray for your protection over the country of Ukraine. We pray for all those people who are living in danger and terror as they watch helplessly the situation develop and play out right before them. We think especially of families with small children, the elderly, pregnant mothers, the sick and the disabled. We pray, pray for the people who are in bunkers and shelters, hearing the devastation outside and not knowing what's going on or what will happen to them. We pray for those who are fleeing their country, leaving their homes, their land, their jobs, their church, and maybe even family members and friends behind. Lord, keep the people of Ukraine safe, and may they, in all the turmoil in their lives right now, remember you and turn their eyes to you to be their refuge and their strength in this time of trouble. We think of families that are separated and on different sides of the border. May, may their love sustain them and may their hearts be encouraged with the hope of being together again soon. We bring before you all the military men and women on both sides who find themselves in a kill. Dare be killed. Position with their neighbors. Lord have mercy on them. Thank you, Lord, for countries like Poland, Hungary, Romania, and others who have opened their borders to Ukraine refugees. May you see their generous and compassionate acts and bless them with peace and prosperity. We bring before you, Lord, the men and women in Russia, even some in government who have chosen to stand with Ukraine. May they find favor in your eyes for their courage and strength of character. <clears throat> Also, all the ordinary people like us in Russia that have had their lives devastated by the decisions of their government and its financial and economic consequences. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all those who have family and loved ones in Ukraine and are watching their ancestral homeland come under attack and fear for the safety of their loved ones. Lord, hear their prayer. We pray that other countries will put aside their political and economic priorities and come to the aid of Ukraine with military support. Lord, we pray with others all over the world that this situation would not escalate to involve nuclear weapons. <clears throat> Give the leaders of other countries wisdom to see the best way to move in unity, to restore peace to Ukraine and stop the evil aggression of the Russian government. 
against a peaceful people. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Be with the brave men and women who are willing to step into the midst of this situation to help. We especially pray for the organizations partnering with our Canadian Baptist ministries who are providing food and shelter to the people displaced in Ukraine and also the refugees fleeing the country. Thank you, Lord. May you bless the work of their hands. Lord, we pray that you will press on all our hearts to pray for peace, healing, and safety for the people of Ukraine. Open our hearts and move us to support the relief efforts of CBM and their partners in Ukraine and other organizations who are boots on the ground. May we respond generously and in love. Hear our prayer, Lord, for Ukraine this morning. Have mercy on Ukraine. Lord, we know that you are sovereign. There is nothing that happens here on earth that you do not allow. We don't understand all these things. Help us to trust you, Lord. Be with our pastor this morning, Lord, as he shares with you what you have put on his heart. And may our worship today be a beautiful fragrance, pleasing to you. All these things we pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are Lord, and you are Lord of our lives, and you are head of this church. Lord, we come and we glorify you for your redemptive work in our lives. It is because of you that we are made pure, and it is because of you that you are restoring and redeeming all of creation. And Lord, when we see craziness going on in the world, help it to usher in us prayers for your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, you also, well, your apostle taught us that, that our battle isn't against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers. And so, Lord, when we feel that... Uh, nationalism rise up in us and wanting to point the finger and blame Russians, Lord, let, may it work in us to pray against the principalities and powers that are influencing those people to do something so horrendous. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would break the hold of the enemy on them and that they would come and be led to repentance. Lord, I ask that you would speak through me that the words I share would be yours, not mine. And Lord, that you would speak to all of us. And we would know that we are loved. Amen. Okay, so last week, um, I talked about the six seals in, uh, the, in Revelation 6. And... Um, there's actually seven seals, and the seventh seal is opened up after what I talk about here. So uh, if you're just wondering, what, why did we stop at six? It's because we, all, we hadn't got to it yet. And again, when we look at scripture, we got to remember that the chapters and the divisions were added in in the medieval times and that the original uh, uh, writings didn't have that. So uh, just because it says, you know, chapter change here doesn't mean it's a new topic or anything like that. So there's a whole flow that is going on here. And last week, I talked about how the Jesus is the, the Lamb of God. They thought, expected him to be the Lion of Judah. And they turned, and John turned, and he saw he was the Lamb of God who was worthy to take up the scroll. And the scroll being the purposes of God's redemptive purposes for, for the world. And it was he alone as the slain Lamb that was worthy to open up these scrolls and break these seals. And as we went into a uh, description of those uh, breaking of those seals, it revealed that as God's uh, kingdom comes, as Jesus rides in and proclaiming the gospel on the white horse, that the world was going to resist. 
this and that uh, the enemy is going to lose. And in, in many ways, it's having the attitude, well, if we're going to lose and we're going to take as many as we can uh, with us. And that this is just the reality of the clashing of the kingdoms. And so that it was it was interesting to read this and be like, wow, look, sounds like Jesus is saying that there's going to be some tough uh, times ahead. And he it was an he was that is true and in in the gospel of john 16 33 he said i have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble but take heart i've overcome the world and that is the uh the big takeaway that i i left with last week and in, in in the midst of all the craziness that is going on in the world that jesus says uh overcome the world and that we can take heart and we can have peace in that and there was an interesting question that was asked at the end of chapter six, after all these crazy things that are being uh, prophesied that will take place. And it says, like, who can withstand it? Who can stand? And so the, the, they're saying, well, with all this craziness that is going on, and then Jesus saying, these are things that need to happen for the redemptive purposes of, purposes of the world. Who is going to be able to stand amidst all this? And then chapter seven is an answer to that question. And so here I'm going to read chapter 7, verses 1 to 3. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the, of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. So the uh, answer to that question, to those um, that will be able to stand, those who will be able to withstand what is going on in the coming kingdom and the clash of the kingdoms of the world will be those that have the seal of the servant of God on them. And then it gets in the, a whole bunch of numbers. Okay, now, as I, I think I spent a whole day trying to figure out how can I simply explain the numbers here, and I gave up. <laughs> um, in in the sense that they are symbolic, but to adequately explain the root of these numbers, it would be a whole other sermon, and I feel God has given me a different sermon to focus on. But for brevity's sake, I'm going to go with this. Okay, the 144,000 is representative of the Jews or the church, the Jews and Gentiles combined together in the church. All right. And the 12,000 represents com the complete tribe. Okay, of the, the tribes that are list listed. Okay, so it's not like um, specific numerical value that these are symbolic. Okay, so with that in mind, I'll read Revelation 7 4 to 8. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of... Neth oh my goodness, I didn't practice pronouncing that one. Neth uh, I'm going to say Neth... Nephatili, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Essachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulon, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. Now, this isn't just a census, okay? And there's something, some things that are missing in this. And there's the interesting setup on how this is set up because there are two tribes that are missing of Israel, Dan and Ephraim. Now, Dan and Ephraim were uh, known to be the tribes that embraced idolatry and basically were divorced uh, from uh, the, the the covenant, 
And then there's something else interesting. Instead of Dan and Ephraim, you have Joseph and Levi. But they weren't tribes. They had no inheritance like Joseph. We're talking about Joseph, you know, from uh, Egypt, you know, Joseph in the Technicolor dream coat. And it says Joseph, 12,000. Well, he didn't have a tribe. And then Levi, well, the Levi was the order of priests. And so um, they and they had no entitlement to the to to the land. They were to be provided for by the other tribes. And then the order is different. Judah is the second born. But he's listed ahead of Reuben, who was the firstborn. So something is up here. Something is being communicated here. And I believe the answer is in the names. Now, names have meanings. And I think in some ways, in our culture, we've lost that sense of, of name and what it means. Um, whereas uh, in the, the biblical culture, the names, they were using language that Everyone knew, and so when you refer to someone's name, you knew what it meant. I remember growing up with my name, Michael, and I thought uh, the question, it said, uh, uh, who is like God? And I thought, oh, that's a pretty cool name. I am like God. And, and it wasn't until I got into Bible college uh, that I realized, no, that was actually a question. The question Michael represents, who is like God? And so my name's a question, not a statement. But uh, that is the understanding of the name. So when we look at the, under, the meaning of these names, we see something incredible being revealed. Judah means praise. Reuben means behold a son. Gad, a great company. Asher means happy, joy-filled. Nephtali, to wrestle and to overcome. Manasseh means forgetting. Simeon means hearing. Levi means joined. Issachar, a price was paid. Zebulon, a dwelling place. Joseph, to add, to be fruitful. Benjamin, or Benoni, Benoni, son of many, uh, son of my right hand, or son of my deepest sorrow. So as we look at this stuff, the answer to the question of who can stand these tumultuous times and those that is those that manifest characteristics of the names listed. Those that display these characteristics reveal that God has placed His seal upon Him. And so I have. Uh, written in the next couple of slides a description from these names of the people that will be able to stand and i have uh, written this out and i've also arranged for an email copy to be sent out for you if you want to to, to read this and and meditate on this so to answer the question that was asked who will be able to stand here's the answer for those who lift up their voices in praise of the one that has overcome the world will be able to stand. Those who behold the Son declaring his majesty, and he alone is worthy of our praise and glory. Those who know that they are not alone, but stand with the great company of saints that have gone before and have not grown weary. Those who are joy-filled because they know nothing can separate them from God's love. Those that know their battle isn't against flesh and blood, but the principalities and powers, and know that they will overcome, and every stronghold of the enemy will come down. Those that know that not only has God forgiven us, but forgotten our sin, that God has separated us from our sin as far as the east is from the west. Those who know the truth that not only does the Lord hear us, but he speaks to us. For he is our shepherd and we are his sheep who know his voice. Those that know that we have been joined into the family of God and are co-heirs to the kingdom of God. Those that know for their sake, Christ paid a great price by entering into the power of sin and death to defeat it so that we might receive the reward of reconciliation with him and the promise of salvation. Those who know that this is not their home 
but will dwell in the house of the Lord for the rest of our days. Those that know that we are not left to our own devices, but through the power of the Holy Spirit can bear the fruit of the Spirit. Those who know that we are welcomed by the Father, who is no stranger to sorrow, and that we have a high priest who knows and understands. These are the people who will be able to stand. With that in mind, let me read the concluding verses of chapter 7 and 14 to 7 in answering of who will be able to stand. And the heavenlies respond. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear of their eyes. Friends, that is the, the promise that awaits us. And as we continue to follow Christ, we are called to take on those characteristics of faithfulness, to reveal that we have been sealed by God, that we are servants of God, that we can reveal that we are his people to a world that needs to know him. And we can have the assurance that even though we are going to go through tribulation and struggles, that we will never be left alone. That God is there and he is with us and he will redeem and will restore us. And that we have the freedom to serve and to, to sacrifice and to love because our assurance is not in this world, but our assurance is the one that who has overcome the world. My friends, that is good news. In closing, let us join together in singing the old hymn, Blessed Assurance. Friends, may the love of the Heavenly Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you forever and ever. Amen.